Hey everyone, Joe Waxman here. And in this video, I want to talk about the chart of, of Jeffrey Dahmer. Just focusing the camera. Uh, but before I begin, uh, so a couple things. Well, number one, Jeffrey Dahmer's been in the news lately because of the new TV show um series on netflix or whatever and i haven't watched it and i don't plan on watching it and i actually don't recommend that you watch it either uh anyway i don't recommend anyone watch it and the reason being is that uh we don't need to fill our brains with all that horrific imagery and it's not going to help anything you can just read the details of his life if you want to know but it's really it's really unhealthy to take in that kind of vibrational energy uh because um it it's food and and everything's food and and the vibrations of the food we eat uh the music we listen to the things that we read or watch it all matters and it fills our brain with certain kind of images and vibrations that will either help us lift uplift us or, or bring us down and right now especially it's, it's very important that we all uh make ourselves uplifted and more positive rather than negative because uh, there's an overabundance of negativity in the world. Uh, so yeah, I don't recommend you watch that or any horror movies or anything like that. I don't, I think it's awful. Uh, secondly, I wanna say that, um, and just while I'm on that tangent, I might as well comment, um, uh, and this is just a little side note. I don't know if you noticed, but like if you listen to alternative media media like outlets, they always not not always, but a lot of times they'll start out their 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 podcast or videos with with heavy metal music, and then they go on to they're all uh, preaching about Jesus as well. But this is a disconnect. It's a schizophrenic disconnect that that they're showing that they don't understand that the vibrational qualities of the the music which they're using to represent their show is completely you know on a different you know it's a low heavy vibration and then they're talking about like jesus and you know christianity religion like as, as like something that is uplifting and, and like higher you know and more moral and humane and all that but it's schizophrenic in other words like th this heavy metal music that they're playing is very low vibrational and i don't want to say it's satanic but it is like because I'm not like coming at it from a moralistic point of view, uh, it's just it's just just objective, real understanding the uh, vibrational differences. Um, that you know that heavy metal music, which I I've listened to plenty. I'm not like you know coming like I'm not puritanical at all about it. Um, it's just it is very heavy and it brings you down and it brings you like in a very low vibration. And then 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 like all like you know then they're like Gee, we need Jesus and all that and. They're, so it's a it's a schizophrenic kind of thing like don't start out your your if you're trying to uplift people if you're speaking about the, if you want the truth don't start out your your podcast or your video with heavy metal music that's or or just you know you don't even need music like what do you need music for it's, you're just in doctrine it's more it's more um it's more nonsense it's rhetoric to try and influence people people like if it's a newscast if you're trying to bring people the information just stick to information forget the music altogether leave it just from you know music videos it's just rhetoric that's the whole reason they put music in in commercials is to try and influence people but if you just want to bring them in real information you don't need music at all it's very annoying uh, the whole point of music is to to capture the emotions and it's a form of rhetoric so in any case that's why i'll never use music in my videos because I'm not trying to indoctrinate and manipulate people to sway them. It's it's propaganda. Every time you hear music, I mean, I know I'm going off on a tangent, but every time you hear music, it's propaganda. You're, you're listening to propaganda every single time. Sometimes you choose to, and it's a music video, and it's appropriate, or it's a movie, and it's art. But if you're listening to news, and then there's music, that's propaganda. That's a bad combination. Like, anytime somebody does that, they're unconscious. They don't know what they're doing most of the time, but it is propaganda. So anyway, uh, anyone who's making podcasts or videos, scratch the music, just no music. Like, and worst of all would be heavy metal music if you're trying to tell the truth and uplift people. So this is a serious disconnect. These people are like, they're not very evolved. I'm just saying, like, I know they're trying to do good and they say good things and they are overall good people, but they're, they're not like very wise. Um, anyway, 
Uh, another note, I was kicked off YouTube for a week because uh, one of my videos, my Donald Trump video was removed and there was a violation of policy, uh, probably because I was commenting on uh, DJT's ridiculous stance about the uh, jibber jabber. I have to be careful what I say, which I hate censoring myself. I'm very rebellious, obviously. It's my Uranus conjunct ascendant square Saturn fighting against the man, you know, and all that. Um, but in any case, um, you know, eventually my my YouTube channel might be uh, like kick, like deleted or whatever. I might get kicked off permanently, but um, in any case, I'm going to do it for now. And I did open a Rumble channel and successfully migrated all my videos there. However, I don't like Rumble nearly as much. And I think that they, you know, I love what they're doing and all the other alternative, um, you know, social media and, you know, uh, video platforms. Um, but I, I wish they would copy what works best because YouTube and Facebook and, and Twitter, they all have something that's really going for them, you know, in a, in a wonderful way that they, you know, obviously we need alternatives, but they they really refine the process of you know how to do it in the right format that's very attractive and very helpful um so they're they're, they're very successful in that way the format how they're outlined so i wish um you know these other social media and video platforms would just copy them like as much as possible to the legal you know avoiding legal issues but copy them as much as possible that way they because they ha they have something that works obviously and they, they don't often copy the good things. And that's annoying. And I mean, you know, as a user, they could hire me and I would tell them what's really important to have. And I, I don't even, I, anyway, that's never gonna happen. I'm just saying, whatever. In any case, um, let's jump right into Jeffrey Dahmer, Mr. Scary Guy. Um, Yeah, like I'll read his Wikipedia, but I'm not going to watch a, you know, entertainment movie or series about him just because I don't, I, I'm very sensitive, I'm very empathic, I'm very sensitive. And uh, not only that, I know it's bad for me. Like it's poison. It's poison for the mind. Like horror movies, like if you don't get that, if you don't get it like physically, like if your body's not telling you uh, that it's poison, just know that consciously it's poison. Like you know, like heroin might feel good, but know that that's also poison, right? Okay, there are a lot of poisons that might feel good to some people, but you have to consciously tell yourself, okay, this is poison. I probably shouldn't be doing it. All right, any case, don't mean to get all preachy, but people don't understand that. And it's not talked about in modern society. In fact, they want you to do that. Just like they want you eating poison and injecting poison into yourself, taking poison pills watching poison, listening to poison. It's all poison. You have to realize that we're being poisoned on so many levels. So, all right, Jeffrey Dahmer was a Gemini son. Ye, representing, I guess, uh, not in a good way. I'm a Gemini, but um, Gemini son conjunct Mercury in the eighth house, clearly. Uh, zero degrees, no less. So zero degrees, of any sign, uh, it's gonna go to the extreme. It's going to have no limitations uh, on that sign. It's gonna be like a baby, uh, the beginner's mind, and it could be good, could be bad. It just means it's going to extremes because it has, it's, it's, it has no experience in that sign. So it's like, uh, I'm just going to do whatever feels right and, you know, without limitations, you know, because, as I always say, in the beginner's mind, there are no limitations. And so there's no limitations for Jeffrey Dahmer's son, which is his the bulk of his personality uh, in Gemini. So very clever right away because, you know, Mercury's in Gemini. Mercury's the intellect. This is the eighth house. So like digging deep, secrecy. This is, uh, and then also we have Venus here. So both, uh eighth house planet i mean two of the eighth house planets are in their own sign so what that means is you know venus is in taurus mercury is in gemini so not only there are they in good dignity but the energy is staying here so what is the eighth house eighth house is secrets secrecy right hidden things so also sex and death uh that's can't you know can't ignore that one 
That's the obvious uh, thing here. We're straight off the bat, uh, Venus is also the ascendant lord. So we see some very heavy eighth house activity. Now, obviously, eighth house is not about like, you're not just gonna be like, you know, somebody has their planets in the eighth house. Oh, you're a murderer. No. Now, there's much more to it than that. Uh, I have my son in the eighth house, and there's lots of significations to the eighth house, astrology being one of them, occult things, but hidden things, definitely sexuality, right? Death, rebirth. Um, but the point I was make, trying to make is that secret things are staying secret. Hidden things are staying hidden. Uh, and just for comparison, I have my eighth Lord in the seventh house. That means secret things are coming out of the seventh house into relationships and with other people. That's why, that's what I'm doing here. That's what I do all the time. It's like, I'm like, you want to keep a secret? Well, I might not be the best person to tell because I like look, I like digging deep and finding secrets and then telling them to everyone. Right. And that's why I, I love exposing the truth of astrology or the occult or or the hidden things within society. You know, now it's all coming out, you know, like the, the pedophiles and the Satanists and all that. I was aware of that stuff a long time ago. Right. But uh, and, you know, you can only tell people what they're open to hearing. So it's like I could tell you a lot of things that you probably just wouldn't accept. But, um, you know, when, when when you're ready, you'll hear it. But anyway. Um, he's not telling his secrets, in other words. He's keeping his secrets all to himself. He's, he's you know, all the, those gruesome, nasty murders are staying in the eighth house, okay? Because he's got two planets that are, you know, uh, in, in domicile, and they're staying, the energy's staying there. That's the thing about the domicile, is that the energy doesn't move. It's it's in good dignity in a way, but that the, the energy's staying there, right? Uh, Venus is his ascendant lord. It's also the eighth house cusp. So first and eighth in eighth. So, and then sun, sun is ruling the 11th house. So community, he was gay. If you didn't know that. So community, gay community going to the eighth house, sex with gay men. That's how he lured most of his victims. You know, it's like, um, you know, male prostitutes and whatnot. Uh, the gay community. That's what this is into the eighth house, sex and death, right? Um, Mercury, Mercury's ruling the ninth cusp and the 12th. So the ninth shows that his philosophy, his belief, his higher mind is going to the eighth house. So people with this, they believe in the occult. They believe in things of the eighth house. That's their religion, that's their philosophy. You know, they can be occultists, they could be astrologers, they could be, um, you know, obviously more, you know, destructive, nefarious things like a um, serial killer who, you know, uh, kills and eats his victims before having, you know, he would have sex with them too. And that's also very much eighth house. And it's very gross, very, very disgusting, very disturbing, but trying to learn from it. Twelfth house also has to do with uh, loss, dissolution. And this is, Gross guys, but like he would dissolve the bodies in acid and um, also drugs and alcohol. 12th house, he would drug them. And he was an alcoholic himself, right? Um, from a young age. And he, yeah. So, I mean, right now I'm just sticking to this, this, this grouping uh, before I move on. Uh, there's also some very harsh aspects here. There's a... You can see a T-square with Pluto, Chiron, and the Sun, and Mercury, right? And that's very devastating. First of all, Pluto, Pluto in the 11th house, square the Sun and Mercury, opposite Chiron. And I mean, this is just like, so Pluto is death and destruction, is transformation. Um, it's in It's in the uh sign ruled by mercury so um there's reception there but it's not it's obviously not making it any worse or any better sorry any better um and then it's up we're getting chiron here chiron is wounds and uh rejection and he was a you know especially as a child as a kid i guess his whole life he got used to it but he was he was he was a weirdo he was an outcast he didn't fit in 
and that's not a bad thing. I don't mean to demonize that, it, but it is what it is. And some people take it okay, and some people don't. Uh, but his was involving Pluto, so highly destructive, right? And Pluto, I mean, Pluto can be a lot of things. I mean, it can be psychology, it can be depth, it can be sex, sexuality, it can be um, deep thinking, like science and research, right? Uh, but square definitely brings out the negative qualities of it more so. And also the Chiron, Chiron in Pisces is going to bring out um, yeah, so the pain, very, very deeply painful because Chiron's opposite Pluto and then square the sun and Mercury, right? So it, it's, it's bringing out a very negative quality to Chiron. Chiron's also semi-square Saturn, a very powerful Saturn, which I'll get to. So this Chiron in the fifth house of fun, right? Romance, children, uh, creativity, um, and he feels robbed of all those because he's just got Chiron there. That's not fun. A wounded Chiron. This is a wounded Chiron. Opposite, opposite Pluto, square the sun and Mercury, semi-square Saturn. Um, this is a very wounded Chiron in a very uh, sensitive area. Uh, Pisces. Pisces is very difficult when wounded because Pisces is the final sign. It really just loses itself, Pisces, when it's in bad dignity. Right. Pisces can just like drink itself or drug itself into oblivion. It's just it doesn't have boundaries. It wants to dissolve itself. So obviously his he's not having fun and he's drinking. He was he was he was an alcoholic, like or he started to become an alcoholic in his early teens. So like 14, they would he was like drinking in the daytime, like whiskey and beer. Right. And very fond of um uh dissecting animals and he was he you know he was he was pretty much a psychopath his whole life because even as a kid he would like kill animals and dissect them and like you know nail them to trees and show people and stuff like that that's what it said in in uh, wikipedia like that, that happened um so yeah i mean first thing to notice is this very prominent three planet eighth house stellium well maybe not still it doesn't matter three planets sun mercury and ascendant lord venus very prominent with with very difficult aspects three of them it's also you can see that there's negative aspects here between um debilitated jupiter and a domicile saturn uh, you can see towards the sun right here uh yeah so that's also so this sun is very afflicted um not good at all okay and we'll get to these planets uh, let me go to the moon so his moon is in aries exactly conjunct the descendant it's conjunct um mars in aries and and eris in aries and i left this here because i think it's probably significant i mean eris is is a very very it's further out than pluto but um it's only significant when it's making context to personal planets and here it is and it's uh, empowered by mars it's considered the god of um like the goddess of war eris um so it has a little different signification than mars but still there is some aggressive warlike qualities to it and because it's conjunct the moon in aries this mars is overpowering this moon right mars and aries mars and domicile in aries and moon is is uh receptive moon is a very passive receptive planet so whatever is conjunct the moon is is uh very significant it the moon takes on the flavor even though it's wide it's a wide conjunction it's still very prominent because mars is so strong in aries and mars is so strong in I mean, technically, this is the sixth quadrant, although seventh house, and it is about 11 degrees from the descendant. It's still influencing the descendant, but it's a very, very strong Mars, right? And overpowering the moon. Moon is feminine. Moon is woman. So when, when a male has a strong Mars conjunct the moon, you really have to, you really, like, if you know this when they're young, then, like, it's like you have to 
I mean, I would, I would say like, teach them to respect women, right? Teach them to treat women well, because that's the real danger here. Um, that they could be abusive to women because Mars is masculine and moon is feminine. And if Mars is strong, that's strong man, strong male energy against the weaker female energy. That's, and this is the seventh house, six and seven. Six is competition. Both are houses of others, right? But the seventh is directly related to others. So this is like uh, competitive Mars and Aries uh, influencing coming toward, plus the Aries, uh, you know, coming towards a, a, a moon, which is much weaker in Aries, but still aggressive. And this is not, this is in the house of other, this is like other people, this is like attacking others, right? Obviously, he liked men. So, I mean, maybe this, the moon in, in Aries has, is, is, is um, relating to that. The Mars, which is his male, you know, aggression, attraction, sexuality towards, um, you know, uh, moon in Aries. Maybe that's why. But in any case, uh, that is very destructive. And um, even without anything else, I would be like, I would say this, that this person is very aggressive towards other people. And, um, you know, it's not a, not a good combination. Mars does not do well in the seventh house, even though it's six quadrant, it's still influencing the seventh. So sixth, seventh, um, seventh house, is, it's too aggressive, Mars. Uh, it's like a, you know, army, like an army sergeant or something, drill sergeant. Good for something like that. Uh, and then moon is square, this domicile Saturn. Right. And Saturn is in good dignity here. And I left um, uh, Vesta here just because it was adding to these negative, to these difficult, hard, hard aspects. Not negative, just hard. They're hard aspects. Right. And that's just making things worse. It's compounding things. If you have asteroids that are that are clearly contributing to something either positive or negative, and then it's worth looking at them. Otherwise, I tend to ignore them. But here, because it's conjunct Saturn, I left it in and squaring the moon. So this moon is getting afflicted by two first class malefics, uh, Mars and Saturn. Uh, both are very strong against a weaker moon, right? Uh, Saturn's in the fourth house. And so the, this moon is very heavily afflicted, but so is this Jupiter, right? Jupiter is, is widely conjunct this very strong Saturn. So it's a similar kind of thing here where you have to understand a weak moon, a very strong Mars, a weak Jupiter, a very strong Saturn. You know, Mars and Saturn are planets of, of aggression and, and rulership and domination, right? Saturn is the, the enforced, Saturn is the, the ceiling. It's the, it's the enforcement of the law. Mars is the aggression, uh, the soldier, the warrior, the fighter, right? And Jupiter, Jupiter is not only uh, it debilitated in Capricorn, which means that his faith, his optimism, his philosophy, his religion, is going to be very like hardened and physicalized and materialized. In other words, he's not gonna be religious. He's not gonna have a good, strong connection with God. He's not gonna have a strong connection with spirituality. And it's further worsened by even though it's wide, it this Saturn, which is very, very strong. Uh, so like discipline. He wasn't disciplined because obviously like his personality, but um he was very authoritative, I guess you could say. So much so that he could pull authority over other people's lives, at least according to him. Right? You know, he was the authority over other people, whether other people were living or dying. Unfortunately. Uh, normally, under normal circumstances, this would be a great Saturn. If other things were, you know, helpful, then he could be extremely hardworking, extremely disciplined, extremely, um, you know, motive. Well, not necessarily motivated, but um, structured, and not letting the negative things, you know, overcoming negativities. A strong Saturn can really allow you to overcome negativities, um, but not in this case. Because is 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 Jupiter 
is too damaged and so is his moon and his sun and Mercury. All right, his Venus doesn't seem to be as uh, damaged. It's got a nice, well, it's 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 in uh it's in good aspect with the the nose. There doesn't seem to be really any other heavy aspects to the Venus, but uh, all the other a lot of the other planets are. Uh, Jupiter has a sextile to Chiron, but that's they're both damaged, so that's not really helpful. Jupiter has a negative, has a uh, sesquisquare to Uranus. That's not good. That's, you know, shocking changes to his belief system, to his worldview, to his optimism, to his faith. He could become very depressed. He could suddenly become radicalized or periodically radicalized in what he believes, you know, because both Ninth Lord is in the eighth house and um, you could say combust, but Mercury tends to do pretty good. Uh, with the sun, less so than Venus, or more better than Venus anyway. Uh, but this this would definitely make him radical with our already damaged Jupiter, negatively so, negative belief systems, uh, very heavy, hardened, materialistic. I mean, he was a cold-blooded killer, let's face it. I mean, he had no empathy at all. He uh, really had no empathy. Um and he viewed people as objects, and he said so. Um, and he started out just drugging men because he was he had this very inhumane sexuality that didn't really care uh, about the other person. It was just their body, very physical, extremely physical. So he he realized that um, with his gay encounters that it was much better if he drugged his victims and they were passed out, then he could do whatever he wanted with their bodies because he was completely, it was, there was no hum, humanity. It was all, it, it was no heart. It was all um, material, right? Like, I mean, m most human beings need the other, per they need the other person. They need the, it's not just a physical thing, right? You need the whole person. You need them, you know, warmth and, and connection and intellectual stimulation and emotional connection and it's like all sorts of stuff that gets people you know that that's what we want really not for not for Dahmer Dahmer did not care he wanted the person out cold did not care for the person one bit no empathy no human connection at all so um Jupiter is trying Pluto um, and here the Pluto is not so damaging, but Pluto is Pluto, mind you. But here it's just, it's connecting, it's influencing, is already a very heavy negative uh, belief system. So he's just a, more easily able to believe in Plutonian things. Um, so something like that. Um, Jupiter and Pluto, when, when they're connected well, can believe and has a very dark, heavy philosophy. So, sort of like Jupiter and Scorpio, I guess. Similar. And Saturn also has a very strong in conjunct with Uranus. And that's going to be very rebellious. That's going to be extremely... Um, yeah, just... Uh, uh the he's going to be you know acting out against the rules and the law having no concern because this is a very tight in conjunct so just really having no connection with the law with the um the law of humanity never mind the the, the written law the law of humanity the law of nature the law of any, any sort of laws he's just going to rebel against and not only that if anyone rebels against him like he's playing both sides like you have to remember when when, when planets are in um hard aspect you we play out both both aspects of them so like even if people are going to rebel against him he's going to come down heavy with this this very um strong saturn on them um which means law enforcement, you know, his law, 
um, will be against any sort of rebellious nature. You know, somebody trying to escape, obviously, would be a Uranian thing, and he's going to be the Saturn. No, you're not escaping. I'm going to, you know, knock you out with a, you know, whatever, a dumbbell. I think he used one time or something like that. In any case, you, I, I think you understand, like, the, Uranus is the, the rebellion and Saturn is the law. And these two things are, are not meeting eye to eye at all. Saturn has a semi-square to Chiron. Like I said before, that's very destructive for Chiron. Saturn is square the moon. Um, very bad for the moon. Right, very, very difficult. Uh, again, the, this moon has, has so much negativity towards it. Uh, so his main, his main planet, Sun, Moon, and Mercury, we can see, and Jupiter are really negatively afflicted and Chiron, right? And then his south node is in the sixth house and that's influencing Jupiter, uh, debilitated Jupiter, retrograde, debilitated, conjunct Saturn. Um, it's in the third house. So uh, I think this probably um, has to do with, well, the eighth house has to do with his, his one like, dissection like going deep inside the body you know like that but um third house is his intellect it's a very sensitive house as well i mean this is the fourth whole sign house so his childhood but also third house his intellect and working with the hands uh, so i mean not to be gruesome or anything but he did you know get in there with his hands and you know like to um that's a probably a minor thing but it, the dissection you know the digging deep is the eighth house but the the hand you know working with the hands that's definitely a third house so there's a connection there um neptune is in scorpio obviously a very dark combination for his fantasy for his mind his subconscious Right, it's in the first, but moving towards the second, right? Um, uh, Mars is ruling the second house, and second house also is uh has to do with not just voice but food, right. Six house, other people. I mean, you can kind of get where I'm going with this. He ate his victims. Um, drugs and alcohol. Neptune is also related to drugs and alcohol. And there is a Mercury, okay, in conjunct with Mercury. So lies, deceit, deception, also bringing in the second house um, element into this equation. Uh, a second, second house, this first and second house, but second house influence of Neptune would indicate also drugs and alcohol, uh, abuse. But, um, the, yeah, then this Neptune in conjunct Mercury, especially is, is, that means he's a liar, right? He's lying and deceiving, uh, fooling people, right? Uh, what else? I mean, I don't think he lived. I'm not sure how, how long he lived. He eventually he was caught and then he was kept in solitary confinement for a year. And then when he was let out into the public of the jail, prison, uh, he was beat to death, beaten to death by one of his inmates. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Venus and Taurus is... Uh, a, significant as far as his um in the eighth house uh, as far as his his uh tastes go his gruesome tastes and sexuality as well uh very dark and heavy jeez jeez louise 
Louise has nothing to do with it. Uh, I think I covered everything. Jupiter is in conjunct the sun. And Saturn is semi-square the sun. So that, again, the, the sun is just... The sun and the moon are, and Jupiter are really bad. Uh, I looked at this draconic chart. It's not relevant in this, at least to me. So I'm not going to waste time with it. Uh, nor am I going to talk about the nodes. Besides the nodes of the moon, which we already see here. Uh, Neptune is in conjunct the node. Or, sorry, not in conjunct. It's in bad dignity to both the nodes. So that's, you know, that's going to bring out, you know, just adding to the lies and deception and alcohol and drugging, drugging his victims and things of that nature. Guys, I think that's pretty much it on this very heavy topic of psychopath Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, Basically, his his son and his moon, I mean, are so badly wounded, and his Jupiter, and yeah, all the, and Mercury, sorry, Mercury too, his intellect, and his mind, his inner mind, his emotions, his philosophy, his, his connection to higher spirituality, God, wisdom, truth, all that very, very negatively influenced, affected by the eighth house and Pluto and Saturn and Mars and all the things I talked about. All right, I'm not going to drag this on any longer. Don't forget to hit like, guys, and subscribe if you haven't already. And you can book a reading with me. Go to my website, macroastrology.com. Or email me at macrogoldmachine at yahoo.com. And I will see you again soon. All right, thanks, bye.